So that's my basic update. Let me move on to uh, something else that we've been thinking about here at Babel is, um, you know, auditing is taking off as a, as a, as a field. Um, and, you know, we're getting more work auditing clients, uh, doing AI assurance. Um, for those who don't know, AI assurance, like assurance is a, is, is like audit in the sense that, you know, there's an external party that's independent that comes in and uh, checks something uh, to do with an organization. It could be their governance. It could be their documentation. It could be their processes. It could be some data um, against some standard for the purposes of providing assurance to some third other party. So like this, there's an intended party for that, uh, that process. And so um, the only difference is really that, that it's, you know, uh, the name and also whether it's sort of binary or not, whether it's sort of a compliant, non-compliant aspect to it. But in either case, um, there's going to be a, a, there just is a growing need for this. And so we at Babel are trying to think about how we prepare our auditors for this, you know, because we have a core team where we've done this a lot now and where we have, we've gained a lot of experience and we've uh, adapted and learned through the process of doing risk assessments, doing bias testing in a non-audit uh, context. And now we have are translating that to auditing context where we're really independent. We're not working with the company. We are um, auditing the company for somebody else. And uh, so we're, we have a top of mind sort of what is the, what's the right kind of training. And I know that people, uh, this is something that people have been interested in. And so, in fact, somebody just asked a question, as a data privacy lawyer who's interested in AI, are there courses or certifications I can do to learn how to do an AI audit? How can I get expertise in the field? Okay, so that's a good question. The problem, so that's exactly where I'm going here, is that um, there isn't a lot out there for this. And, and we're seeing a, a problem as we're talking about hiring more people. What are we going to require you know, like a data privacy lawyer, for instance, that's a person who has a lot of experience in a particular area, but might there might be some other pieces that are missing. And so we've actually been thinking through this process for our own, um, our training our own people and coming up with our own training program, because we do need to have kind of a robust onboarding training program for our auditors that's consistent across the auditors. And so, um, I wonder if it would be better if I just share my screen. Let me see. Um, okay, so we're thinking about the auditor certification. And this is, I have to be careful because this is something that I'm not sure whether we're going to be offering this. Um, so we had we have been playing back and forth with the potential for uh, providing courses externally to people. Um, and in some sense, you know, we... We're not sure if we want to commit to that. Like we we provide courses, we have some courses available on the part of the algorithm bias lab. We have some training courses available. We're going to be putting these training courses together, and we've already started this process, but we're still on the fence about whether we want to be certifying. We we're we're definitely going to be certifying people to work with us and for us to do all these audits. We're still on the fence about whether we're going to be offering this sort of generally to people. Um to get certifications on these sorts of things. And that, so if people have thoughts about that or comments, um, I'm willing to hear, hear it like, uh, because right now we're still on the fence about this, but internally we are putting these together because we do need to do this for our own auditors. And there's a, there's a chance that we would support, let's say people who within for humanity, uh, who for humanity is that nonprofit I was talking about who are, getting certifications to do audits under certification schemes that for humanity has but for humanity you know provides training on those certification schemes but there's a bunch of audit um, generalized ai audit stuff that they aren't offering and that we are gonna we need for our people and so there's we might potentially um also offer this to for humanity people so we're not sure so let's let's take a look at the what i'm what we're talking about here, what we've been thinking through. And there are basically five kind of core areas that we've seen are there. And there's more, there are more things beyond this, but this is the five core. If we had to kind of certify somebody, 
uh, that we want to make sure they have capabilities in all of these areas, um, then these are the five core ones. And so there's algorithms, AI, and machine learning. So this is the technical bit, the technical knowledge. Now, it, it's not deep technical knowledge. It is broad technical knowledge. It's deep in the areas where we think there are there's risk and you have to have specific knowledge. But it's not like training you to be a programmer or something. Um, so let me go. Let me go through here. This is the background. Okay, objectives of the training. So let's let's take a look at the curriculum. So so for AI algorithms and machine learning, we already have a course for that. Actually, um, we're going to be updating it for our for our auditors and and probably adding a certification exam for that. Um, we'll be trimming it down and making it more targeted and then having a certification exam for our auditors for that. Um, but that's basically done. And then we have these other four areas. And so the next one, which we think is really important, um, is uh, algorithmic risk and impact assessments. And again, I just was talking about how critical the or essential these are to things like the Digital Services Act, the components in EU AI Act that require these risk assessments, Algorithmic Accountability Act, the um, a number of state and local laws in the United States, it's going to be everywhere doing these sort of impact assessments and risk assessments. And so, um, and these are required in our New York City audit, like even for New York City Local Law 144, which is the one we are currently most active in, we require that companies do these sorts of impact assessments. Now, everybody in our core team has has deep knowledge in that. We've done it for other companies. We know what it looks like. We have criteria around it. But we do think as we hire more people, they need to have experience and knowledge around what is an impact assessment. And so that is going to be a core competency that we are going to require for our auditors. Um, and some people coming from different fields will have more or less experience doing impact assessments in different areas. There are human rights impact assessments, there are data privacy impact assessments, um, there are environmental impact assessments. And so there are, we don't, we're not reinventing the wheel, uh, but it does need to be specifically tailored towards algorithmic and socio-technical systems. And so um, that we have basically a lot of material for that already, and we're going to be packaging that together into training for our, for our auditors. So if you're thinking, if you're you know, the data privacy lawyer or person who's uh, thinking about switching fields, uh, you know, finding experience or, or articulating your experience in risk and impact assessments, I think is an important component of uh, moving into algorithmic auditing. And a lot of cases like a human rights impact assessment has a huge overlap with a risk and impact assessments, because what we're ideally looking at is the risk to fundamental rights and interests of stakeholders as it regards to the socio socio-technical system. And so uh, the, a lot of the a human rights impact assessment will, will follow some of the same reasoning. Um, and the similar for data privacy, where you're, it's the methodology is going to be very similar in terms of how you systematically tackle this, but uh, the details of where the harm lies, that's that's a little bit different for algorithmic systems. Now, because so much of the focus, that's the second one. So there's the technical knowledge of AI, there's sort of general knowledge about risk and impact assessments related to algorithms specifically and socio-technical systems, including artificial intelligence. And then the next is bias, accuracy, statistics, and statistics of AI testing. So this is a catch-all category for some of the more technical uh, details of where some of the specific risks rot lie related to things like bias, accuracy, and general statistical properties. And so the reason for this is like, you can understand, for instance, what how a neural network works, you can understand how a large language model works, and the general process for like taking training data and uh, producing an algorithm. But a lot of the actual testing comes from understanding where that algorithm is accurate where it's not where that algorithm is biased where it's not and when i say where what i'm talking about is the parameter space of the inputs and the context in which it's used there's a there's a whole parameter space uh that you need to understand there and this 
relies on statistics in, in a lot of ways to figure out what, how confident you can be uh, that you do have an accurate measurement of, let's say, bias in a particular relevant part of the parameter space or accuracy or robustness. Um, uh, and so that's what this this course is meant to cover. That's what this training is going to meant uh, is meant to cover for our auditors. You don't have to be a whiz at statistics or a whiz at um, at you know Bayesian analysis or machine learning or anything. But what you do need to know is enough information to understand where things need to be tested and when you need more testing and where you need to ask the tough questions of the people that we're auditing to make sure that we're not missing pieces of that parameter space. And so this is something that's a kind of a pet project of mine that I'm really trying to, uh, and some of the technical people in our group uh, that we're going to have to really get together and figure out uh, in terms of pedagogy what's the best way to tackle this? Because it is a unique skill set that we need to be able to uh, transfer that knowledge to people who are not technical uh, and not necessarily mathematically inclined, but have enough uh, proficiency that they can actually do the job of an auditor and to ask the right questions and to recognize where there's risk. Now, all of this, I should say, uh, you know, we definitely have cross-disciplinary audit teams. And so not everybody has to be 100% proficient in any of these five areas uh, and you probably will specialize in one versus others um, but there has to be a basic uh, background and foundation of knowledge in all of the areas which is what we're really aiming for um, okay and please ask questions if 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 you if there anything jumps out at you as as interesting or problematic or something okay so we have the technical algorithms AI and machine learning we have risk and impact assessments. We have this sort of more statistical uh, um, component of looking for for bias, accuracy, and just the general statistics um, of when uh, when are algorithms appropriately used in the right context. And then we have uh, AI governance and risk management. And so this it was tough. We had to figure out how to categorize this. We had originally thought that we were going to do a course on. Um, the AI regulatory landscape. I think I'd even posted on LinkedIn about the potential potential of creating that course, and a lot of people were interested. But what we realized is that's less important for our auditors, and that's important for like consultants in the field to to know what the landscape is at this moment. But that's going to change, and that's going to adapt. And so, what we're really looking for is to get sort of evergreen kind of concepts around AI governance, risk management as it relates to AI, um, things that we know are important now and are going to be important 10 years from now. And so things like accountability, things like risk management frameworks, there are a number of risk management frameworks that are we will go over and we're, we're going to want to be familiar with, but they we're mostly going to be looking at what are the things they have in common and uh, what evidence do we have of the effectiveness of those things and just having a general knowledge about risk management and AI governance. And there will be a component on the regulatory landscape within this training, because you do need to know kind of, uh, you do need to know the landscape in general. And that's that will be the piece that we will continuously update as regulations change, but it will be just a kind of a sweeping look at what are the kind of uh, regulations that are out there and what are they requiring in terms specifically of AI governance and risk management? And so that's another component because all of us currently working, the core team have a lot of experience also with this. And in fact, we do research and we have a paper that is going to come out very soon. If I can get, get it finished, uh, get the sort of, uh, I'm putting to get, putting it together. The team did it and I'm just doing this sort of prettying up. Um, it's coming out very soon where we did a kind of a deep dive research into what's out there in terms of AI governance, what's working, what isn't working, what lessons can we learn? And so we have a lot of experience with this uh, as a team, but we need to really think about how do we transfer that knowledge in an effective way to somebody, a new person who's going to be working with us. And so that's, uh, that's the point of that particular part of the, uh, of the course. Um, uh, let me let me check. Uh, I'll come to these questions in a, just a sec. So, 
let me move to the last one and then I'll stop sharing and I'll come to some questions. So algorithm auditing. So this sounds like, haven't you been talking about algorithm auditing this whole time? Why do we have a special topic on algorithm auditing? And what we mean by algorithm auditing here is not necessarily the subject matter because there is a separation in auditing and assurance in general between the subject matter that is being assessed and the sort of auditing procedures itself, the actual data, you know, the actual work of doing the audit. And so we have, we, we're going to need to train auditors and this, this will be a really important piece on the actual audit procedures themselves. So what's the difference between audit assurance and assessment? What are the independence requirements? How are we enforcing those independence requirements? What are the audit procedures that we go through? So a lot of this is we just draw from international standards on assurance engagements. Um, so what are audit procedures? How do you, so things like what, what is inspection? What is recalculation? There, is, there are names for these things and there, and there are ways of doing them. them. Um, what is audit evidence? How are we collecting evidence? How do we uh, put credence in, in the evidence? Um, audit opinions, you know, uh, what what's the difference between uh, reasonable assurance versus, uh, uh, you know, limited insurance and, and those sorts of things. Uh, audit risk, how do we assess the risk uh, of, of performing these audits, et cetera. And there's a lot here. And so this is a component in and of itself. So even though all of this stuff up above is all critically important, and we think that the auditors need to have this information, a lot of the reason that they need to have this information is because what they will be doing at the end of the day is assessing documentation and evidence from engaging with companies uh, to figure out whether they did these things right. And so you do need to have subject matter expertise in these areas. I think people might argue with me on this. So I think there will be some auditors in like financial auditors uh, or in other areas who might say that you actually don't need this as long as you have good criteria. Um, I think my argument is that we are not at the point where uh, we can just go through a checklist and say, yeah, you did or didn't do this without having the background knowledge here. Now, it may, there may come a day where, where you don't need that. Um, but I think this is all subject matter expertise. And then down here is the actual, how do you apply that regarding risk of the audit and risk of misstatement uh, and people giving you bad information or doing the wrong thing and you not catching it. And so that's that's where um, that's where that component comes in. That's why it's a separate issue. That's why even though it's all talking about algorithmic auditing, we have a separate component on just the audit procedures themselves and um, how you how you manage those. Uh, and we'll also keep you informed about uh, things like training, um, what knowledge is needed for the field. For those of you who are interested in moving into this field, I know that a few of you are, um, you know, we'll make sure that we update people on uh, what our thoughts are on this, what potential offerings we might have for training in this area. All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, please, uh, you know, like and subscribe. And uh, thank you everybody for showing up and asking great questions. And I'll see you next week.